Hello, mortals. I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. I've been tagged by fit to be red who is a new booktuber that you've got to check out. And he is breaking out, so you better check him out while the checking is good. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyway, he tagged me with my ideal bookshelf tag. The original tag was by Bookmarks and Breadsticks. So the first question is, let me use my blackboard here. Here we go. First book I remember reading as a child. Well, if you go beyond picture books, there is one book I really remember falling in love with. I think it was like third or fourth grade and it was What the Witch Left by Ruth Chu. Now this book was about two sisters who find a drawer locked by their mysterious aunt and inside are items that have magic powers like an invisibility cape and that sort of thing. Now I was a big fan of Bewitched and for obvious reasons this book really spoke to me. Number two, a book received as a gift. Now I don't get many books as gifts. And I usually don't give books as gifts. In fact, I did a whole video, which I'll link up here, about gifts to give book lovers that are not books. <laughs> but I do have this one book. It's uh, called Taz by Hakeem Bey. I would be shocked if many of you know who Hakeem Bey is. He's sort of a philosopher into the occult and chaos magic and that sort of thing. And this is called The Temporary Autonomous Zone, Ontological Anarchy and Poetic Terrorism. And it's basically a book of essays. Number three, important to teenage years. Now the book I'm gonna go with is Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein. And I know Heinlein isn't the most popular author in these modern times. Now that some of his writing is considered problematic and I get it, but at the time, I had only read Heinlein's juvenile books in middle school. And when I got to high school, they had Stranger in a Strange Land on the shelf. And since I recognized the author, I, of course, went and checked it out and read it. And it blew my mind. It is considered one of the most influential American books ever published, I believe, by the Library of Congress. And it was a mainstay book for the Cultural Revolution in the 60s. And if you read it, you'll understand why. But anyway, this book was sort of a gateway to all sorts of different adult science fiction books. And there weren't that many fantasy books back then. But I really got into science fiction uh, after reading Heinlein, Stranger in a Strange Land. So it's special to me in that way. And I still think it's a good book, even if some things may be problematic. And whatever you think of Heinlein, this book was really important to me at that time that I read it, and it, it opened my mind to a lot of things. Number four, a book that I always go back to. Well, it has to be Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. It is just that book for me, or those books for me. I read it, I believe, in seventh grade, and then I read it over and over again throughout the years, especially when I was feeling down and out. This one lifted me up. I could always get lost in the Lord of the Rings. That make me basic? Uh, let's see. Brings you a feeling of pride? Well, I'm going to say Dahlgren by Samuel Delaney. Dahlgren, if you don't know, is was published, I believe, mid-70s, and it is a difficult, difficult book to get through because there is no plot. There's no plot. It's kind of stream of consciousness. It's about a city that has gone through an apocalypse, and you're not sure why, but existing in this city is being in a state of timelessness. So it's a very experimental book, it's a very psychedelic book, and it is a very big book. So when I finished reading it, I felt like I read something important. And I wasn't sure why, but I felt pride insofar as I was able to finish this difficult book and feel like 
I learned something from it and I didn't waste my time. And most importantly, that I enjoyed it. Let's see, feeling of wonder. Well, how about the very first book I ever reviewed on my channel, The Forgotten Beasts of El by Patricia McKillop. It was the first ever Fantasy Book Award winner. It's about a powerful sorceress who inherited her power from her father and grandfather, and they have collected magical creatures all around them, really mythical, legendary creatures. And the story is that she takes in a foundling and raises it and learns about humanity and whatever. But anyway, the writing itself is just so lyrical and magical that it definitely brings you a feeling of wonder. Next we have Reread or Love the Most. I'm just going to have to say Lord of the Rings. I know it's basic, but I am that type of fantasy nerd. Let's see. Mm, number eight. You want to have on your shelves forever. Well, I can't say Lord of the Rings for every answer, so I'm going to say The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Oxbury. And it's a very thin book. It's a children's book. There's some lovely illustrations by the author. And I think this is just a very moving book that's nice to have on your shelf. Next is number nine. On your shelf, you want everyone to, what you want everyone to read on your shelf. Let's just go with The Little Prince again. I think anyone can read this. Most of my books are science fiction and fantasy, and that's not for everyone, but I think The Little Prince can be read by anyone. And is that the last one? Number, number 10 reminds you of a specific moment or period of time in your life. I'm going to say the Valdemar books by Mercedes Lackey. Now, I might have started reading them in like the late 80s, early 90s, but it was around that time period where I read so much Mercedes Lackey, her Valdemar books. If you don't know, Valdemar is this magical kingdom where those born with magic powers are bonded with these sort of spirit animals that they have telepathic powers with, and they're usually in the form of a white horse. And the Valdemar books are just pure escapism. And I always think about that time in my life because I just needed the escapism. I mean, that's when AIDS was like at its worst, and it was just so nice to get away from reality. And what's more, one of her trilogies, you should start with Arrows of the Queen. I think that's the first trilogy. But there's this other trilogy called the Harold Mage Trilogy with the character of Vaniel. It was the first time I read a fantasy book with a gay main character. And Vaniel is a little bit melodramatic, but I just fell in love with them. And I just fell in love with all these books. And there are a ton of them out there. Let's tag Break Even Books because I haven't tagged them in a while. <laughs> and let's tag the Bookish Sock because she's recently tagged me in the Femathon tag. And let's tag Jess Owens. I know she's done tags before. Let's see if she'll do one now. If she even sees this video. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed.